Hey folks, welcome back. Chris Garlock here with Michael Redmond for our latest AlphaGo versus the world. Today, we've seen this player before, I think, right, Michael? He's come back. Uh, for <laughs> once, more, once more, once <laughs> more. <laughs> um, Four-time world champion, Park Ji Long. Of course. Um, I think he's a world number two in the ranking right now, but you know, he's, he's one of the greatest players that is active at this time. And he was already a top player. He, he was already, already a world champion. Right. And this game, we're going to see AlphaGo do something that sort of breaks the taboos again. No, so, not again. Um, the previous game, it did the direct 3-3 for the first time. Yeah. In this game, it's going to crawl on the second line. Crawling in the second line. I think that's like the, the third thing you lure and earn as a co-player is yeah. not to crawl on the second People line. People just tell you. Uh, it would have been better if you just uh, let, you, let that group, group die or something. Just you know? die, right. <laughs> walk away, <laughs> walk away. I can't wait. Oh, cool. All right, let's go. So this is the opening that AlphaGo likes to play. When White has played this 3-4 point in the lower left corner, it does play the large Shimuri. So to a certain extent, you see that Master is sort of fixed in its openings. But the beauty of this series is that, um, first of all, we have human players who try various things. Also... AlphaGo is not completely fixed. It does do some variations. So that's what I like. I like to see the variety in this in this series. White plays a Karkari. And this is um, actually the Karkari can still be played, but no one slides here anymore. And among various moves, like White could play away, White could play an attachment here. Um, you might see some players playing the shoulder hit. Uh, among the various moves that White can choose from, the one that I sort of like, just because I played it in a game of my own and, and won that game, maybe. Uh, but there's this game I played where I played the test. Well, actually, it's a slightly different position, but I have played this in some of my games. Um, playing this attachment um, against the Large Knight Shimari and just getting some extra strength towards the side there so that White can, um, for instance, White could even play something like this and get a nice position there on the side. Mm. Um, or could continue with this. Uh, this is just a computer-generated variation here. It's not what I played. Um, but just in this, it's, it, this is the simpler variation, I would say, that shows that White has, in this exchange in the lower, left, the lower right corner, um, while White has uh, allowed Black to consolidate that corner territory, in return, White got this extra stone here towards the side. So White is actually gaining a, one stone there in return for giving Black the corner territory. And so it's working well towards the right, the right side. So that's a variation I like. It's very fast paced for White. Or if we get into that variation where White's playing an attachment against the corner, that gets a bit more complicated, but um, I'll put the details in the book, I suppose. Okay. And um, the choice between those moves is something that, I think it changes every time we get a new, um, set of values for computer programs, but they're never going to choose this slide anymore, I don't think. The, the slide has just gone out of um, favor. Mm. White's going to play towards the corner. I think White has to play the attachment at the 3-4 point. So in the game, Black played away. And in modern Go, you will see White play the Knight's move, mm -hmm. or maybe the, the diagonal move here, one of these two. White doesn't play the pincer very much anymore. In this game, White just played the 3-3 three, three point. So White is probably hoping to start an attack on Black in the upper right area. Uh, White might be expecting Black to play an extension here. This is what we would usually do in this position. I play Black to no the, the, This is the human move, and this is the AlphaGo move. It's taking the initiative. <laughs> AlphaGo is so good at taking the initiative. And it jumps to the fifth line. So this is a, a variation that we see AlphaGo playing in this series a number of times. And you will probably remember that computer programs almost always like to press here. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask, yeah. Um, AlphaGo likes this move to a great degree also. But when Black has a, move, a position in the lower right here, sometimes in this series, I, I think two or three times at least, you will see AlphaGo playing this double Kahari from this side. So this is actually pretty unusual, like you might say in the history of computer programs, AIs using the AlphaGo's algorithm or the neural networks, I should say. It's pretty unusual to see this move, mm -hmm. but uh, it's a move that 
AlphaGo likes sometimes. And I wouldn't be surprised if um, computer programs start playing it at some point. Because it's pretty effective. And white uh, jumps out. At this point, um, black's still OK. It's, uh, I mean, white is still OK. It's still fairly even. And white pincers on the side. So this is where the game starts to get exciting. Yeah. Um, and black attaches here. And since white has a local advantage, like there's three black stones and four white stones in this white's turn, so white has kind of a two 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 uh, move advantage in the right. local upper right. White wants to play forcefully, so white plays a honey here, and black plays here, and it's pretty clear that. White, what Black's idea is that Black is going to play something like this and make a nice shape in the center. And so there's a tendency for White to try to play more forcefully here also. And that was White's mistake, actually. In this position, if White just continues like this, um, something like this, this would have kept the game fairly even. So White just had to sort of roll with the punch and allow Black to play this sequence which up to this point does look nice. It looks pretty nice for black, but white does have that double peep, which is a bit annoying here. The double peep, it, it, in this, when black plays this way, it, it gives white some added security on the right side and allows, gives white the option to play on the upper side here. So white has played both sides, um, and that is um, the profit that white gets from this little attack here. The fact that white has positions on both the upper side and the right side. So this would have been good enough. But there is a kind of a human tendency to try to take more advantage in this local fight here. So white played here. Uh, I was afraid of that. Ruh -ruh. It's a very, it's a very it's strong a, local move. It's the strongest yeah, move. Yeah. Black pushes through. So at this point, already AlphaGo says black has a 56. I mean, Leela zero says, uh, no, actually, I should say Katago. I always get confused. But Katago is the one I'm using for this because um, because it can allow for the six and a half point Komi. Right. So black's at 56% at this point. So black has a slight lead. Um, with Katago with six and a half points, I think black starts at something like 52%. So mm -hmm. black has gained a few percentage points. It's not something that would really bother a human player. But uh, white covers here and black connects. So this is a point where actually, yes, at this point, this was the timing where white had to crawl. This is the one timing where white can crawl here effectively, because um, it should be fairly obvious that if black jumps here, there is an issue here with this move. So this is a bit of trouble for white. Mm. So black has to pull back uh, like this. We're not going to see black play this point after this exchange. Once black plays here, if white crawls here, black gets much better shape with this move. Mm -hmm. So there's a huge difference there. If white can play this, if white can play this now, and force black to pull back here, it's just that much better for white. And that black has played this move, which is a kind of a, it's not a very effective move. So it would have been much better for white to do that. And if black connects here now, white will just ignore the left, the right side, and play this move, which is a, a an effective follow-up move that is going to cut off that black zone on the, on the upper side. So I would expect something like, um, if black plays like this, white can still take the upper side. So this is a, a variation that was shown to me. Um, I forget which program I was using, but it, it was one of the possible variations that could happen. This is the one I chose as something that I would be happy to play with white. Uh -huh. It's pretty tricky using these computer programs because they show you so many um, variations that work for the computer, and you have to try to find something that's going to work for yourself. That, that's right. the way I use the computer programs. But yeah. crawling was definitely a key point. We're going to see this local position in one more game later in the series. Um, and somehow this seems to be a, a blind spot because the, the human player missed this move in that, series, that game also. Interesting. So white covers on the second line, black connects. And white gets to connect underneath. I should mention that 
taking here, although it's a ponuki, it's not going to really do much damage to black um, because when black gets to play this tari, black gets the corner territory. Um, this is maybe not so um, not as good for white. So just giving black the corner like that is not good enough when white has played so many moves in the area and wants to get a, a an attack here. So white's trying to attack strongly here. And black cuts on the third line. This looks so dangerous for black. Um, actually, if white had slided here, it would have still be not so bad. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say this is okay for white, but it would have been a little bit better. It's still playable for black. Um, but white crawls here now. And here we're going to see black start to crawl on the second line. You know, this is where, you know, if you do this, someone is going to be annoyed at you and tell you you shouldn't crawl on the second line like this. It's, it looks so painful for black, but that white wall is not, not going to mount to anything. Like it's not doing anything. And already at this point, like, um, the professionals watching the game, even humans realize that this is working for black um, when black gets this nice position on the outside. And already, like, black is something like 80% if you ask Lila Zero. I mean, if you ask Katago, that is. Oh, wow. And we used to think that positions like this were just terrible for black because black is so squeezed on the side here. Uh -huh. um, black is just barely alive. But that's four points of territory. It's almost as much as white has in the corner. And the fact is that when black has this position here, there's no way white will be able to attack this. So it's no. alive, basically. Black has this position in the corner. So white's wall is not going to work in that direction. And this whole white wall here, there's nothing white can do with it. And so um, Katago is saying it's 80%. That's pretty bad. It's something like um, 19 points before Komi. <laughs> We're talking about a world champion here. So I this know. Is pretty I know. He's got this gray wall separating two live groups. Right. There, are, Everything that Black has is alive. That's the problem. And we're going to see AlphaGo attack this wall. And we're going <laughs> to see AlphaGo attack it very, um, very nicely. You know, just go ahead and live if you want to, that kind of thing. Um, but I think I'll stop here for this. For this. Yeah, period. yeah. You, you, you gave me a quick sneak. Free. It gets pretty. It gets pretty dicey, as you might imagine. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, Park must have just been. Uh, I mean, he's he trying to make trouble. He, he tried to make trouble. He did his best, but AlphaGo didn't even try to kill it. <laughs> Which is even worse. It's like, yes. <laughs> all right, something to look forward to. Great, great game. I can't believe crawling on a second line. You know, interestingly, uh, that does not, you know, the 3-3 has become quite popular, but I haven't seen too many people crawling on a second line, so. <laughs> no. I think both my games maybe, but, you know, <laughs> it happened to work also, but it was a completely different position. Absolutely. Well, something to think about, folks. Something to consider. So, uh, let's make sure that uh, you've got a, you've got a plan, as always. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you, Michael. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you all next game.